So you need two things to mine cryptocurrency. You need machines and you need power. This is one source of power. The network hash rate is always growing. And so you have to scale because you're competing against that many more people. As you're scaling, you have to get more efficient. Either your cost of electricity comes down or the efficiency of the machine goes up, ideally both. When you're doing this kind of stuff at home, on your own, you can be a little inefficient. You can have, you know, a little air loss or a little extra power. But when you start scaling, those little things start adding up. You know, a little more dirt on your heat sinks, they don't work that well, they don't cool. So you need more air, that means more electricity. It's a combination of solving, but also mostly trying to figure out a different or better way to do something. Right from the start when we started mining, Quebec was a great place to mine. And one of the benefits about mining in Quebec is that it's renewable power. It's clean energy coming from hydropower. Because one of the criticisms, and it's a valid criticism of, of cryptocurrency and of Bitcoin, is that it has a large carbon footprint if you're not using renewable sources. That was important for us, that we engage with clean energy as much as we could. We started traveling around Quebec, looking for opportunities, meeting with people, um, having discussions about, you know, facilities and megawatts. And then there was all of these kind of characters that were literally traveling around the province of Quebec, usually ahead of us, finding five megawatts here or 10 megawatts there or 15 megawatts there, which then they were kind of acting as brokers. One guy we met with in suburban Montreal literally had an iPad. He wouldn't show us the iPad, but he was like just going through, oh yeah, I got 15 megawatts here, I got 10 megawatts here. And he's like, just give me an envelope with whatever you want in it. He was asking for cash payments, at that time, I didn't know Peter that much. Uh, I, I was just hoping, really, that we wouldn't pay a guy like this uh, cash and do these kind of uh, deals, because that's not what I was looking for. And, you know, Seb came from the corporate world. I, I remember him looking at me going, is this how mining is? Perry and I were moving very quickly. We were trying new things. And I think Seb felt like we were skiing too fast, you know, downhill. Bitcoin was, was hyped up, everyone was really uh, interested in it. I mean, I was trying to act conservative uh, in, 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 in that space and nobody was in 2018. It was a big adjustment for him. But he also brings his analytical skill set, his analysis and judgment, which makes us better as a company. Because I know if Seb says, you know, don't do this, then I, I, we won't do it. So I was really happy how it turned out. We just figured we're not going to deal with these kind of guys and uh, we're going to do our, our things our own way. It always comes down to energy, right? We want to make sure we use clean energy and we don't use more than we need. We can find ways, whether it's a clean data center, you know, harnessing the wind, even the longevity of the machines affects efficiency because if they end up in a landfill, well, that's e-waste and that's no good. The longer they last, the better it is. Our industry is very new and there are so many ways to do certain things. You gotta be willing to try it. I don't have a problem, you know, with 99 things not working as long as one of them does. I feel like that's what this glass really helps with, seeing the big picture. <laughs>